Hey everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Throwback Thursday. And today we're going back to 1998 and we're opening some Top's Finest. It's a good day to do some Top's Finest because tomorrow we have the brand new 2021 Top's Finest coming out. I'll have a new release preview video for you to open up a few hobby boxes of Top's Finest. We'll have a live stream of Top's Finest cases, a live case break tomorrow night, sometime around 8 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and also we have another live stream, an early morning live stream as we anticipate the target drop. We'll probably get that started around 6 to 6.30, somewhere in there in the morning Eastern Standard Time. If you're online at that time, come watch us rip some cards. We'll all hang out and wait for Target to release their cards, and hopefully we'll all be in the know and go over there and snag some blaster boxes of whatever. So, Hope you'll join us tomorrow. I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button on this video. would really much appreciate that. And also there's a little bell. If you tap that notification bell whenever I post a video or go live, you'll get notified via the YouTube app. All right, with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We've got two hobby boxes today. It's both going to be Series 2. We're going to be looking for all of these insert cards in here, refractors and double-sided mystery finest cards and sequentially numbered The Man cards, stadium stars, double-sided, no protector parallel cards. There's 24 packs in this box, as you can see right there. And we've got a couple sponsors. Derek's going to get this box, and Steven's going to get this box. They're Patreon members. If you'd like to become a Patreon member, it's $3 per month. Gets you access to all of our breaks if you'd like to buy into them. We have still spots available in the Top's Finest break and higher tiers. Higher, higher levels of donation get um, packs and or boxes sent to you on a monthly basis. So let's go ahead and rip this open and see what we can find. Now, Series 2... These boxes go for roughly, I think it's a few hundred dollars, actually. A lot of these boxes are listed for like three, four hundred dollars on eBay right now. And off the top, we can see we have an oversized card. You get these in roughly one in every three hobby boxes. It's a larger card. You can see a nice Jeff Bagwell, Top's Finest card. That's a cool one right there. There's only eight of them in the set. I'm going to Jeff Bagwell. If you go by Beckett, it's worth uh, eight bucks, according to Beckett looks like actually check that it's four four bucks look the wrong one all right so here we go tops finest for derek there are 125 cards in series two there's 150 cards in series one and as you can see there is a protective film over all of these some of you may have peeled that off when you were a kid some of you may not have and look at this we might we might have the best insert card that we're going to find tonight as the second overall card. It's the kid, Ken Griffey Jr. Stadium Stars. Stadium Stars are tough to find. They're inserted at a rate of one in every 72 packs. And this is arguably the best card in the set. Ken Griffey Jr. There's Kyle Ripken Jr. and Derek Jeter, uh, Bonds, McGuire all in that set. But a nice one right there. So congratulations, Derek, on this one. Kind of looks like there's a little bit of scratchiness there, but that, of course, could be solved by peeling the, fil the film off the card if you really wanted to do so. BJ Surhoff, we've got a Barry Larkin. He's a Hall of Famer. Steve Finley and another Hall of Famer, Tom Glavin. There's the back of what the cards look like. Kind of nice. These packs used to retail for $5 back in the day. I remember that Finest and the Flair were always out of my price range. I was always buying just base tops and the score and Don Ross and stuff like that, the cheaper stuff. A lot of times I didn't even really splurge for Upper Deck. There's a nice Jeff Bagel. Kind of like the glove there. Kind of cool how they have different, uh, like there's a catcher's mask. You got a baseball for a pitcher. For John Nunnally, I guess, is not known for his defense there because he didn't get anything. So Jeff Bagwell Hall of Famer, lots of Hall of Famers in this. If you're wondering about rookie cards, there's not uh, not a lot of rookie cards in this at all. In fact, I don't know if there's any rookie cards. They went with mostly just all the stars of the time. There's Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer right there, Pokey Reese, John Olerud, Mark Clark, and Bartolo Colon. Nice one right there. Everyone loves Bartolo Colon. There he was before adding a few extra pounds. Of course, now Bartolo Colon is retired. Keep an eye out for some of these other insert cards. I think we may have one coming up right here after the Bobby Abreu. Nope, it's just a checklist. So that kind of stinks. Good old checklist. Kind of has a refractor feel to it, though, which is pretty nice. There's Rob Ventura. 
Jose Valentin, there's Jason Giambi, and Pat Henkin is the last one. He's like Pat Henkin for a couple years. He was a good pitcher. I always had him on my Pony 2 team, which is kind of like a fantasy baseball league that we had. And I guess that was a refractor of that checklist because this one doesn't have the refraction going on. Is that even a word, refraction? All right, so our first stickiness of the day, it goes to Ellis Burks. And... Uh, it looks like that doesn't have the protector on it at all, and it's not on the back. So I don't know if that's one of those um, no protection cards, which if that's the case, um, they're worth about four times as much as a regular card. It says on the packs, the stated odds are one in every two packs you get one of these. So we may see a couple of those. Um, I don't, don't know if that's any different or not. Maybe someone at Tops just basically peeled off the protective film for you. Like I said, I always left the film on because I was afraid that I would hurt the card value, but I don't think it really matters too much. There's Randy Johnson, Hall of Famer, the big unit. That's a good picture of him. Andy Pettit. Paul Molitor, another Hall of Famer. He gets a batting helmet on his card at the bottom. Chuck Finley and Jay Buhner's last one. Doing a little bat drop there watching a home run. Good old Jay Buhner for Derek. All right, next pack up. I don't think there's any autographs in this. If you're wondering if we're going to find an autograph today, the answer is going to be no. We'll find some autographs tomorrow on Top's Finest 2021. It's sticking again. And uh, it looks like all the no protector cards are going to stick. There's Jermaine Allensworth. So if you come across a sticky card, it's likely because it doesn't have that film on there. So I kind of like that film being on there because imagine if there was no film on any of these cards... This would be like a 50-minute video because I'd have to literally pry apart every single car. There's Jeff King, who retired right after hitting the 10-year mark, got his pension with full benefits from Major League Baseball, and went off and rode into the sunset to uh, his ranch. I guess Jeff King, uh, you know, had it his fill of baseball. I used to like Jeff King as a kid. He played for the Buccos for a few years there at the beginning of his career. There's Fred McGriff, who should be in the Hall of Fame. And we've got a no protector card coming up because it's sticking like crazy to the McGriff. It's going to be a Kerry Wood. There's the big hurt. Frank Thomas, Dean Palmer, John Franco, and Mark Grace is our last card there. So we will start to see some doubles here after not too long. Just because uh, there's only 125 cards in the set. We haven't really seen too many doubles yet so far. And this Andy Bennis is horribly miscut. You can see there's a part of another card on that card. There's Matt Williams. That happens sometimes. You get those miscut cards. Some people wonder if that's going to add any extra value. It really doesn't. It's just kind of like a... It's not, it's not really considered an error card. It's just considered a miscut card. It's a factory screw-up. No protection on the Jorge Posada card. There's A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez, one of the better cards in the set with his 696 career home runs. There's Ray Ordonez, known for his glove. Armando Benitez, known for blowing saves. And Rico Bronia is the last one there in that pack. Next up, we've got a Travis Lee. I remember he used to be a big-time prospect back around this time, late 90s. Everybody's all on the Travis Lee Train and we have our second refractor. I think that checklist was our first, and now we have Todd Stottlemyre refractor. That's a nice one right there. The refractors, by the way, are inserted at roughly one in every 12 packs. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of cool. There's Trevor Hoffman, he's a Hall of Famer, Bobby Jones, and we've got Francisco Cordova, who threw a no hitter in 1997, albeit a combined no hitter with Ricardo Rincon. Let's see if it talks about it there. Oh, there it is. Talks about uh, Ricardo Rincon, 10 inning no hitter. I was actually listening to that game. I'm going to go ahead and rip down through all of these cards now just to speed up a little bit. That game in 1997 when Cordova threw that no hitter, I was listening to that live, of course, on the radio, as I did with all Pirates games. And I was driving around at the uh, DMV, the driver's license center, practicing for my driver's test to get my driver's license doing some parallel parking and stuff, and listening in with, uh, I think it might have been my mom at the time, I feel like my mom did most of the, dri the uh, driving practice with me, so she gets the credit for teaching me how to drive, that was a long time ago, alright, so I, I can see that we have some inserts in this stack, which is nice, so Derek, congratulations on those. Also saw a nice Pedro Martinez. We'll probably see a lot of doubles now coming up. 
But you can see there's, uh, what is there, six cards per pack, six super premium cards, I guess. If you wanted to see the wrapper a little bit more, I probably should have done that at the outset. All the odds are stated right there. It's kind of tough to see on there, but uh, there's all of the odds. Man, the man refractor is a tough one to find. One in every 793. Even the man cards are really tough to find. One in every 119. Now, the man cards, you might think, oh, is that a subset for Stan the Man Musial? That's what I thought when I first saw that, but it's actually just top players. Like, for example, Beckett has the Ken Griffey Jr. in the man set listed at $80. That's probably the most valuable card in that set. So hopefully we can find some of those the man cards. And here we go. Let's see if we can find it. There's Harold Baines, who is a Hall of Famer. Jorge Posada for the second time. Good old Darren Bragg. Carlos Baerga. Uh, Paul Canerco back with the Dodgers before heading to greener pastures with the White Sox. Garrett Anderson was a solid player. Tim Nehring, that's a name that I remember. Ron Coomer, Bobby Higginson, a power bat for a few years there. They're good old Tony Saunders. I think I see a refra There's a refractor right there coming up. We also have a no protection card. It is going to be Cecil Fielder with the Angels. Ed Sprague, former Pirate. Chipper Jones is a Hall of Famer. We got Gary Gaetti. Here it is. It's a Rico Bronia. That's the refractor. There it is. Rico Bronia. I already saw that card earlier. The base card. Manny Ramirez. Mike Lieberthal, who had a bunch of cards in the signature series from 2020. There's Vladimir Guerrero Sr. His son is doing great things this year. Pedro Martinez, one of the all-time greats. And there's a card sticking to the back. And that's going to be D. Lee, good old Derek Lee, Billy Wagner. Should be in the Hall of Fame in my book. Bernie Williams is in the Yankees Hall of Fame, but not the Hall of Fame. Fell off the ballot really quickly, too. I think he was a one-and-done guy where he just uh, was on the ballot for one year, didn't get the 5% of the vote that you need to get to stay on the ballot, and then he was gone. There's Bobby Abreu. He got the 5% that he needed, so he'll be back next year on the Hall of Fame ballot. It'll be interesting to see. I think uh, I think Bonds and Clemson are in their last year of eligibility. We'll see if they get in. There's Trevor Hoffman, Al Martin. One of the Pirates stars from 1997. The 97 Pirates, a bunch of no-names for the most part. Um, they were known as the Freak Show because for some reason they were able to win and uh, be about a 500 team or better most of the season and actually fought for the division title the whole way to the final series. But I, eventually they lost the division, I believe it was to the Astros. There's John Smoltz. He's a Hall of Famer. Stan Javier, Jermaine Allensworth. Most of these Pirates that you're going to see from this set, you're going to be like, who the heck is that, Jermaine Allensworth? There's A-Rod again for the second time. There's a big cat, Andres Galarraga. And a sticky, sticky card. That's going to be Trevor Hoffman with the no protection, Frank Thomas. I almost uh, would rather have the protection on there because I feel like, I don't know, I don't know if those cards are coming off damaged or not. There's Barry Bonds. One of my favorite players, Bernie Williams. Again, that's the first time we've seen that Bonds. All these other cards we've already seen before. Tom Glavin there as well. There's the back of the Bonds. All right, so that's Derek's box. You didn't get any of the man insert cards, but you did get a nice oversized Jeff Bagwell, and you got several other insert cards and a few refractors. Derek, thank you very much. We'll move your stack off camera, and let's go ahead and bring in Steven's stack. And we'll rip open the second box, and uh, then we'll call it a day and get ready for 2021 Tops Finest tomorrow. Can't wait for that one. Like I said, I, I think I have like 12 cases total ordered. We'll be breaking as many as you guys want me to break. As long as uh, I have spots open and cards to rip, I'll rip them all night long. Within reason. I guess, uh, you know what, 12 cases... I think I did like six cases last year of Top's Finest. Took me about three and a half hours. So if we need to stay up to like 2 a.m. to get it done, we will. I'll be um, I'll be breaking probably about starting at 8 to 8.30 after I get all my kids to bed. And then we'll be ready to go with Top's Finest. It'll be my first, I think it's my first ever time doing a double up, double live stream in the same day. <clears throat> It'll be pretty interesting. I might be a little bit tired, but I might have to take a nap in between. I'm going to be getting up nice and early for the target drop. Hopefully, you all can check out the target drop. I don't know if they're going to do Bowman again. They've dropped Bowman the last two weeks. They had a limit of 10 blasters of Bowman the last two weeks. Six limit on Bowman Megas. The Megas were $29. The blasters were $25. 
So we'll see what they're dropping this week. I'm hoping that we maybe they'll put some Series 2 up. And series 2 is due out on Wednesday next week. So can you believe it? We're only, only less than a week away. What? what? <laughs> One of those um, films is already coming off for Steven. There's a Paul Molitor in there. We've got a no protection card right here. So let me just battle with that for a second. It's an upside down Kerry Wood. Not sure why it's upside down. Maybe this box will have all of the no protection, no film cards upside down. Literally, the the, uh, the insert set's called no protectors. Kind of a weird insert set. Pedro Martinez, again, has a no protector on the back. This time it's a Jorge Posada. I don't think those cards are all that much more special. At least to me, we have a refractor coming up of Doug Glanville. So that's a nice one right there, Doug Glanville. Not a ton of value to Glanville's cards, but he's a... You know, pretty cool announcer slash analyst for, I think it's ESPN. I don't have cable, so I'm not exactly sure, but I see him every now and then on uh, cable at other people's house. There is Manny Ramirez. Richard Dalgo, who's got the messed up card? It's not going to be Frank Thomas or A-Rod, luckily, but what is with this? It is... <laughs> All right, well, uh, the Rafael Palmero is supposed to be a no protector, but it is going to have some protection on there because it just stole Jason Giambi's protection. Looks like, um, I don't know what the heck's going on there. I, now, now it looks like it is protected, so that was just a weird, I don't know, weird factory defect the way that got put in there. There's Alex Gonzalez, Andy Bennis. Not a lot of insert cards yet. There's a Tim Belcher refractor. So we've got two refractors so far. Belch. One more time for you. But no insert cards. We're still looking also, by the way. Steven didn't get one of those oversized cards. Those are one in every three boxes. A lot of times with the newer releases, they'll put an oversized card in every single box, it seems like. <clears throat> Which, they're cool, but they are a pain to ship. Let's see what we've got in this one. I, don't, I thought for sure we'd have some more inserts than this in this box. There's Jermaine Allensworth once again, Jeff Reed, Pettit, Darren Braggin, Carlos Baerga. So we're down to this. Last stack for Steven. Again, everybody, thank you very much for watching. As we kick off Top's Finest Week. Top's Finest Week's not going to last that long. It's more like a Top's Finest Weekend because Top Series 2 is going to steal the show. Come next Wednesday, we'll have uh, a hobby live stream for you where we bust open hobby cases. Then we'll have a jumbo case day for you as well. Hopefully we can find some 2021 Series 2 on the shelves at Target or Walmart. I haven't seen the checklist yet. As of uh, yesterday, when I checked it, there was no checklist on Cardboard Connection. I expect Key Brian Hayes to be in that set. I also expect Jermaine Mercedes to be in there, along with Jake Cronenworth. Those are three of the top rookie cards. We'll see who else made it in there and see what we can find. I don't, it seems like these uh, Series 2 boxes are going for an extremely high amount of money, though, so I don't know what's the deal with that. They seem to be a lot more expensive than Series 1, though. And then when I was looking at blaster cases, I think I saw like $1,400 for a blaster case of 40 blaster boxes, which, man, that's, uh, that's, that's almost like $40 a box, which is crazy. Hoping all the prices go down. And that's, uh, well, if the, the resellers and flippers stop uh, grabbing them all up and um, creating a shortage in the inventory, then prices should go back down i'd like to see It'd be nice to be able to pick up blasters of series two for you know if you have to go on ebay to get it maybe be able to get it for like 25 bucks which is a fair deal i think 25 dollars is fair because the person that's buying it for you has to pay the sales tax chipper jones Barry bonds right there and then they have to pay the ebay fees i think 25 is a nice break even fair point uh what is this <laughs> we have an all-black card. I'm not so sure what this is. Let's flip it over and see if there's anything on the back. What? It's like a, it's like an, an old-school printing plate. Who is this? 
I have no idea what we have here, guys. It looks like um, there's maybe a picture on the back, so you can kind of see the silhouette right there of somebody. We have a very strange error card right here, and uh, I don't know what the heck to make of it. I'm sure like uh, some sleuths out there could figure out who this is. If you really wanted to take a look at it, it looks like it's, uh, you can see the, 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 the hips right there. I'm guessing maybe it's a reverse image, so it might be a lefty. Um, there's a swoosh right there, so maybe it's an insert card. Uh, who is this guy? What card is this supposed to be? I have no idea. <laughs> but Steven, you have a very, very mysterious card in your box. I don't think I've ever pulled anything like that before. It's completely missing. It's it's uh, just get the bare bones of the card there. That's pretty uh, pretty awesome, actually. So Stephen may have some luck there. I have no idea what that would even be worth. I'm sure somebody out there that collects oddball type stuff and factory errors and all kinds of you know cards like that would be interested in that one. With something like that, that's kind of like a one of one, even though it's not number one of one. It's a, it's a unique card. So I would say, Stephen, if you're interested in selling it, you could toss it up on eBay for whatever and put a best offer on there and then see what you get and take uh, take the, the... What? what Another one? All right, so maybe these aren't so rare. This one, it's a different player. I can, I can, see, this, it, I can see the silhouette better in person than you can on camera. Um... Looks like it is a, it's a batter. His arm is up right here. You can see his legs right there. He's following through his swing. And the back of the card, he is, uh, I, don't, I can't really tell. Is he in the process of about ready to throw a ball there? Wow. That's very strange indeed. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen anything like this out of Top's Finest. Two strange error cards, John Smoltz. Bobby Jones, last card there is Jay Buner. So that'll do it. Steven, congratulations on these two mysterious cards there. I don't know what to make of that. Maybe we can get some insight from the people in the comment section. I hope you guys all have a great the rest of your Thursday. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Throwback Thursday. If you like our Throwback Thursday videos, we have a whole playlist of them. You can check that out in the playlist link down below. Also, my Patreon link is down there if you'd like to check it out. It's $3 per month and uh, get you access to our breaks. And if you do sign up, uh, there's still room for tomorrow's 2021 finest break. You can sign up over on Patreon, and I'll get you in there. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all tomorrow bright and early for the Target drop. Target's been dropping cards starting about 6.30 a.m., starting with basketball and football. So we'll try to get uh, started with our live stream a little bit before 6.30 so we can all settle in and then go get some cards. So see you all tomorrow, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening. Good night, everybody.